category again. What? <laughs> you know, when I stopped tripping because I decided I didn't want to trip anymore. Like in the middle of a trip? Yeah. You ended it like a yogi? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was like, I hate this. I know exactly yeah. that it's going to be a terrible trip. I am done. I don't want to yeah. do this. I'm done. And it, and it, wow. Yeah, huh? it's great. That is like a yogi move. I'm pretty awesome. Did you levitate? Yeah. You you were like, actually, <laughs> I'm done levitating. And you were like, eh. and, and then I enough. fell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're right. Let me. Am I recording now? Yeah, Josh. Recording Kingdom Season 2, Episode 5. <clears throat> Sorry about the throat. <sighs> We're live everywhere. Everyone live to got the to world. Hear. Yeah. Everyone got to hear the tail end of my asset story. Well. Uh... And how awesome I am. How great is that? You're amazing. I know. Uh, but that's not what the people want. The people want to hear us clap. <gasps> that's right. Let's do it. Woo! Applause. What's up, everybody? It's On Fire Tonight with Josh and Tressa. We are joined by Christopher Pravdika, Kingdom Correspondent Extraordinaire. He's here to dish the dirt on what's going on in Hanyang <laughs> and beyond. So, we're going to talk about Kingdom Season 2, Episode 5. We are going to spoil the shit out of it. This is your one and only warning to pause the episode and watch it if you haven't seen it already. Okay, you're back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I heard you know, it every time I say it, that's what's going through my mind. And right? I'm not going to sing it, but it's there every single fucking time. I Why aren't we just watching and revisiting? Why Welcome aren't we? Yeah. Gabe Kaplan, mm -hmm. John Travolta, a, a young John Travolta playing mm -hmm. Vinnie Barbarino. Mm -hmm. That was his peak. He peaked. Yep. 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 Sweat hog. And then that's it. Now, was that pre-Scientology? Did he get into well, Scientology later? Yeah. He, we got into singing, right? That for, Immediately from uh, Sweat Hogs, it was like a little, he had a single out, a di little... A ba it was a ballad, right? Is that right? Yeah, when he was really young, they had a, yeah, he released like, and I think it did all right. But then, he, and then he went to Greece, so more record. Then he had more records, and then, uh, but then it was movies. What's this? Uh, they, they, I guess he's a little gay or something, like in a <laughs> not just a happy way. I mean, that's the rumor. And yeah. that uh, Scientology has all the, keeps him under. Uh, under their thumb by re wanting, uh, threatening to reveal that he is. Is that how it works? It, like isn't that strange though? Uh -huh. Because it's like, why wouldn't, like, I mean, there's only shame if you're shamed, right? Like, right. And so, and that's true about anything, anything that you keep a secret, you mm -hmm. can attach shame to whether it's uh, founded or, or not. not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess there's gotta be more to it than that. Maybe it doesn't seem Maybe. like it's enough leverage. Maybe he's just of that mindset. I'm that generation where I can't be gay. Guys, yeah. what are we talking about? <laughs> We're talking about John Travolta, the John yeah. Travolta cast. Are you well, kidding me? Yeah, welcome back to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I met John Sebastian once, and it was really it was like kind of a bucket list thing for me. And I did think of that song. Oh wait, he's the singer, singer of that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you meet him? Him. him? Under what circumstances? Up in Woodstock. He lives in Woodstock. I was We were rehearsing in Woodstock in this place that had like a few people of note popping in and out. And he was one of them that like kind of made my knees a little weak. Is he famous for other stuff? Yeah, yeah. What else should I know him from? The Love and Spoonful. Oh, oh yeah. fuck. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, Josh, it's how dare of, you? It's a lot of uh, shame. A lot of songs I know. There. Lot, I've been living in a world of hateful yeah. spoonfuls. <laughs> nice. Guys. What's up? 
we got problems. Yeah, uh, we got we got hot goss in Joe Sun. Oh boy, I I gotta honestly the first third of this episode I was very confused, and I don't know if that was on purpose or I'm just a big dummy, but doesn't have to be one or the other. True. So let's go through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we start off at the Scholarly Institute. We start off at the Scholarly Institute near the Citadel of Hanyang. Li Chang tells all their families will be executed at dawn due to their service to him. A badass dude on a horse is like hanging out in the mountains and he's reading a patient journal overlooking everything. Inside the city, the families are all like roped up and gathered up and crying and it sucks. Yeah. We, we see one dude, like a soldier guy. He's like, I guess, in plain clothes. He's a father of a kid who's like being dragged away. And then that dude disappears into the crowd. Yeah. Were we supposed to know who that was when they showed him there? I don't think so. Okay. I think he's just, we understand him to be the father of that kid and yeah. husband of that lady, that lady next to the kid. <laughs> he did a good job acting like they weren't actually his kids. Really right. good job. <laughs> to the point where I was like, is he their kid or dad? I don't, I you know. Back in those days, you could just like <laughs> move one citadel over and no one would even mm -hmm. know. Melt into the sidewalk. It's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my name is Fred Williams. Fred Williams, you look just like James Cardwell from uh, the other. I just other got one town. of those faces. <laughs> just got one of those faces. That's really hard to think of a last name for some reason. <laughs> all right so we go to the counselors and some of them one of them i cannot i don't i don't know if i know any of their names but he's like maybe maybe we should just postpone these executions they didn't i mean they're just families like eh. yeah they're debating this royal edict mm -hmm. and it's like who are we to debate this this That's is like blasphemy. a royal edict well yes but like these are you know, some of these families are um, n from noble lines and we can't just wipe them out. And it's like, royal edict, buddy, read it and, and weep. <laughs> and then we see that dude who like disappeared into the crowd, that lone father soldier dude. Mm -hmm. He comes and confesses about the prince and his crew and begs for his family to be spared. We see but why would, why, would, why would we spare him? Does he have information for us, Josh? Yeah, he's like, the prince is held up over in, like, the school over there. How come? To attack. <laughs> okay, cool. Isn't that right? Yeah. Isn't that, like, he's like, hey, the prince has this plan. The prince. I'm going to tell you his, what it is. And his crew. Now let my family go. Yeah, let my people <laughs> go. When Li Chang was <laughs> oh in God. Han Yang's land. Ooh. <laughs> let my Li Chang go. Yep. And then a gong. Get it. <laughs> if, I, if I was really Fred, I'd have the gong. <laughs> so we see a quick shot of the young queen, and she's admiring her own reflection. And she is in classic film noir lighting with shadows crisscrossing her face. That's some stuff right there. You have, and then boom, guards and archers storm the school where, like, the prince and his crew had been hiding. And guess what? There's Nobody's nobody there. fucking there, buddy. What the hell? Yeah. We see the crew entering into the gate, and they're each giving their credentials. And Li Chang presents his real credentials, even though he's got, like, a basket on his head, like, just any traveler might do. The guard looks at it, 
looks at Lee Chang, and then we see this super slow mo music <laughs> video style as he like dramatically unveils his face. Man, and every <laughs> all of the crew behind him is like masks off. This yeah, was a cheesy guitar moment. Yeah, totally, for sure. Totally. Every, every single shot yeah. of Lee Chang in this episode was like, "What's up, bitches?" <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> like as much as I want to hate on it, I also love it. Yeah. I love it so much. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I would have liked it better with without the guitar, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's all right. Uh, it's overlo overlookable. Yeah, 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 for sure. We go to where the executions are going to take place, and Doofus Governor is there, and he's got to make the proclamation of why all of these innocent people need to be killed. Thought we were going to see another dead baby. I know, right? Why they? Why? Why yeah, not let's now? Tie up some little kids and chop their heads off. Yeah. What's the all, problem, Kingdom? All of the innocents are like begging for mercy, but the like the men are sitting stoically. Of course. So Doofus can't do it, right? Yeah, Doofus gets halfway through reading the edict and he's like, what the fuck am I even doing? Like, for sure. For he real. has a crisis of conscience. He's yeah. not a bad person. Like, <laughs> he's just or an he, idiot. he is a bad person? Uh -huh, Maybe? Uh -huh. I don't know. But, like, he's not this bad. Right. That's really fucking bad. He almost crossed the Doofus line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Guess what this goof did next? <laughs> he, he executed murdered. tons of families, dozens of innocent. <laughs> he got a he got a little too far though. He had the swords raised. Oh my god! Until <laughs> Lee Chang walks up and he's like, "Holy fuck, dude! I can't believe you're here!" And he goes and he bows to Lee Chang, and he's like. I give you the strength of the royal commandery, which is like, I am not going to be a ding dong, sir. <laughs> you shouldn't either. And then that cop dude who was like, I will investigate the queen's family no matter what. He's like, give me a sword. I will do my best. That guy's awesome. Yeah, yeah. he is. We cut to a bunch of the, the counselors. Uh-huh. And... Somebody runs up and, oh God, I forget. But he's like, restrain all the guards. All the guards need to be restrained. They're out now. We're with Li Ching, basically. Yeah, it was a total switcheroo because the guards went in to notify the scholars. But the scholars were like, prank, <laughs> we're, we're arresting you. Switcheroo. Uno. <laughs> right? Reverse card, reverse card, reverse card. <laughs> Yeah, do you guys play, you can, like, put reverse card on reverse card. Uh-huh, yeah. Reverse and reversal. Like, yeah, and you can yeah. do, like, uh, collect four, collect four, <laughs> yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's like, what's the point of playing if those aren't the rules? <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah. Is that not the rules? Yeah, Uno, like, after years of people debating, like, if my house rules versus your house rules, mm. the official Uno rules are like, no, you can't do that. Fuck and you. everyone was like, fuck you. <laughs> Does it create like a feedback loop? It's just I think one it just gets too move, easy. Right? Yeah. I'm it's oh, but I mean oh, you mean to not be able to do that, it's too easy? No, it's too easy to be able to use all of your cards in one go. Well if you reverse a reverse. But mm -hmm. it's like strategy, man. I I hate I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying why Uno would say it's not kosher. So uh, then one of the queen's uh, lady assistants, I don't know what to call those ladies. It's like head nurse. Uh, is it? Okay. She's like, we got to so. go. We need to escape. If we don't get out of here, they're going to execute us. Yeah. Get out while the getting's good. Like. And the queen's like, nah, I'm going to yeah, go get dressed. Was, torture was what they were worried about. Mm, they were about uh, to get tortured mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they want information. Probably right. not tickle torture yeah. either. Mm. The old fingernail. The uh, old fingernail stuff. Where's that keyboard? <laughs> 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 she plans to go to the main hall 
and welcome her son. And it took me a second to realize she was talking about Lee Chang. So. Right, because she's like 10 years younger than him. Right, right, right. And she just stole that baby. Right. She's also given birth, air quotes, yeah, 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 to yeah, yeah. the son. So well, we see the top birth. scholar dude reading that patient journal that we saw up in the hills. Yeah, after we get a slow mo shot of the Chang, the Chang gang walking up to the building. <laughs> That's the sound of the Chang gang. Yeah. <laughs> and this time they have timpanis. <laughs> like a like a spaghetti western. Yes. Yeah. The uh. Yeah, they march in. The scholars who hadn't been on his side beg for mercy, and they all march into the throne room. The queen completely decked out on the throne. Her Sunday best. Yeah. She's like, you have not done enough to honor your mother. And he's like, you're not my mother. <laughs> you're not my real mom. <laughs> Give up the throne, lady. <laughs> We got the cop and the scholar accusing the queen of murder and deception and conspiracy and all types of ill shit. <laughs> she ain't even sweating it. Yeah, she's like, la-di-da. And the prince is like, I call for you to step down. And she laughs. Yeah. She's got that. And she's winning in the hat fight. Yes. Oh, 100%. Right? All wars are done yeah. in the language of hats. <laughs> See, the, another example of how she has to be no older than 15. She is such a fucking bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> you almost did a spit take. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. I would have ruined that beautiful screen behind us. Because <laughs> she's basically like, you know what? If I can't rule this country, then nobody can. Because what happened? Why? Why would she say that, you guys? Yeah, she's she's got plan Omega. <laughs> Mutually assured destruction. So like the the scholar guys are like, we will make her issue a royal edict. I'll go get the seal. I'll go with you. <laughs> I'll go start the paperwork. <laughs> totally. It's like <laughs> we we know how to do things. We have bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah. And then we see the queen's nurses activate Initiative Omega. Um, they go down to the basement. The oh, they're gonna cells. free Sobe? That's great. They free the zombies. Oh, and that's a Sobe, bad idea. who's still blindfolded, uh -huh. hears their screams. Obviously, they didn't escape their own plan. I don't. I think that was part of the plan. I don't think the queen gives a shit about those people. It was like, yeah, release. Release the, the diseased Kraken. monsters. They're going to eat you, mm -hmm. but don't worry about it. Oh, she's got to tell them that. She's going to be like, it's fine. Just let them go. You'll be fine. <clears throat> so then all the zombies clear out to like ravage some more. Sobe gets herself like unblindfolded and un Tethered. unchained and everything. And she sets herself free and she finds her way out. Once she gets outside, she can hear screaming and yelling, and she's like, ah, oh, fuck. There's Another a zombie dude attacking somebody, right? Like, there's, mm -hmm. like, some oh, great cannibalism going on right in front of her. Uh, yeah, the one scene in the hallway where the counselor who has, uh, before that, okay, there's this whole scene that takes place behind a wall. We don't see any of it. It's all just sound. It's so great. I love right. it so much. Just like our backdrop. Yes, yeah. exactly. And one of the counselors, you see a spear like being pulled out of the shot. And the next scene, he's running and the zombie counselor is running after him. He's got a spear in his gut, halfway in, halfway out, runs after him. And shish kebabs the other counselor with the spear that was in his gut. Beautiful. That whole sequence was so fucking great. Yeah, so you've got a zombie shish kebabbing mm -hmm. a non-zombie guy and then infecting him and then you've mm -hmm. got two face-to-face -face zombies shish kebab together beautiful and yeah they get dispatched by one single arrow oh right yeah this is a total fucking orgy of violence like across 
yes. the entire citadel for a, a very long time lots of chaos lots of zombies and we haven't had that in a while so i was happy to see it we got a great latrine gag we mm. got yeah uh, we got the guy hiding uh occupied. in the commode yeah it was like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> occupied i said only and then one, he's and like, there's only one way out. Yeah, there's only one escape. God damn it. Do the poop shoot. Oof. <laughs> the Hershey Highway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we There's the one shot where Doofus is like trying to, he's laying down and being attacked by a zombie. And I think it was. Yeah, Young Shin. Young, young Shin, yeah. Takes he takes a like, spear. spear he spears the zombie like through the butt all the way through its body and the zombie just pukes blood for like 25 minutes it feels yeah. like <laughs> yeah like in the governor's face apparently it wasn't all the way in that's why it was still alive so it kept vomiting blood and kept vomiting blood. and then he had to kick the spear in it farther so it would actually kill the zombie <laughs> through the head oh my god yeah. So good. I was thinking Evil Dead when I saw that. Oh, totally. for sure. It's, yeah. That's like, that is 100% splat stick. Like, <laughs> yeah. blood simple, Evil Dead. It's fucking fun. Yeah. Yeah. For and sure. then, like, after that, like, the governor, like, covered in blood, gets up. And he becomes a sword-wielding, zombie-killing master. Yeah. It happens to everybody in these zombie shows. Right? Like, they get it's pushed gotta. to the furthest point. Yeah. And then it it goes silent. Well, and the cop guy is, like, an amazing swordsman as well as Archer. Like, he's dispatching zombies. Yeah. I mean, and then, like it goes said, on for a while. Silence. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Why is it silent? So uh, he was like, why have the screams stopped? Did and they get it? She's in the throne room mm -hmm. with, the with the queen and like random counselor dudes. In full PTSD mode. That, yeah, like, for we sure. We haven't seen from her yet. She's yeah. Been, she's traumatized by too much stress. It's finally caught up. And the queen is stoic as ever. Just sitting there, no reaction to anything. And we see a fucking tidal wave of zombies come rushing around the corner. There's like 6,000 of them. Yeah. But you know what? That paper that paper wall is keeping them back. So they're all right for now. The top scholar tries to hold the gate, but they break through. And then just zombies chasing everybody. <laughs> yeah. He had a, a pretty grotesque suicide. Yeah. <laughs> It was obvious he yeah. had gotten bitten Bit, or yeah. something, so he was like, I'm going to try and hold these guys mm. back, but I'm going to take the tip of this sword and he off myself my first. Yeah. He ripped his own throat. It was. Jesus Christ. Wow, yeah. They barely make it through a gate and seal it, and we see crows swarm as night falls. The throne room is surrounded. End of episode. Yeah. What was up with the these final shots on uh, Lee Chang's face? And the <laughs> did you guys notice this? He was doing I, some really weird face acting. Yeah, he's he's, he's into his, it. I don't. I've, I've seen. This, I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't know how to read it. It just seems he was. Uh, I, I I don't know. Did you guys not notice that? I I mean I didn't Re notice anything. Refresh weird about my memory because I feel it's, like I I didn't. It's at pick the up end on when, it. They're, when they're in the fight. Like when they're the he's holding the the final line they've they've run through you know him and his crew have run backed up to f the furthest uh the, he's their, just waiting yeah, for the gate to like explode these weird uh like i think they're supposed to be breathing heavy and he's just uh, like in fight mode but it looks i don't know he just i had no they had nothing to do with the story or anything i just like i think it was just a weird acting choice his, yeah maybe i didn't notice but i just assumed he was like terrified seeing the end of this and himself and all of his people and I'll screenshot it and send it to you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this was a really short um, episode right now that we're talking in because there was so much zombie violence yeah. that you can't even cover it all because just explaining it is monotonous and you don't want to listen to it. But Totally, but it was fucking awesome. Action. So good, so great. And with like, like with so much fun violence, there's mm. like, legit funny moments yeah slapstick yeah 
Like they really were like, what if we played with it a little bit? <laughs> and how does this how does this play out for the queen? She just she's just dead now. Is she's like, right? fuck you. I I'm gonna die the queen. <laughs> <laughs> she's either gonna die get eaten by the zombies or or the boys are gonna have enough guitar music to kill to kill her. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't think she has a plan beyond releasing the monsters and just letting everything go to hell. I think we're going to see a dead baby. Spiteful. We're going to see that. a dead baby. We've yeah, seen a ton of dead babies. No, I mean no. another one. We're going to see that stolen dead baby because those zombies are going to come in and no one's going to help her and she's just going to sit there the entire time. She's going to use the baby as a human shield. Yeah, for sure. She doesn't give a shit. Yeah, she's going to be like, all right, don't anybody try to bite me or I'll bite this baby. <laughs> and it'll confuse everyone. It's like in Lethal Weapon when he's like, all right, don't move and puts the gun to his own head. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. She'll do it. About that, uh, He's that, serious. That naked gun sketch with the the bribing, where he he's <laughs> he's got the perp and he wants to he wants to get information from the guy and he this maybe this like loosen up your tongue and then <laughs> but then that guy starts asking him questions and they just keep bribing each other with the same <laughs> money, <laughs> money back. I love that. And then they borrow. He's like I'm at, and then <laughs> they need to borrow money from each other to bribe each other. <laughs> Any stuff. Is there anyone nowadays that's like an equivalent to Leslie Nielsen? Hmm. I don't think there is. Like kind of Betty White was almost a little bit. Oh yeah, a little bit. I think that when people try to be that, it's really obvious and it's it falls flat. Yeah, I think you're right. I feel like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Adam West mm -hmm. is kind of like Leslie Nielsen, but like he did, he's he never dead. understood his own power that way. Like Leslie Nielsen understands that he's funny, yeah, but yeah. Adam West is just that guy and doesn't understand that he is funny. Nothing. And it's amazing. I mean, uh, okay. Les uh, Leslie Nielsen's deadpan is just a little, mm -hmm. little, a little intense, a little hard to get around. Uh, I don't, yeah, I can't think of anyone who can, I mean, j just airplane. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe like Albert Brooks. Is he like in that realm? I mean, he's I so, he delivers stuff so straight. He does. And he's a little, but, he's got a little uh, anxiety in everything he says. Yeah, I don't think he counts because he was always a comedic actor mm -hmm. and. It's, I don't know. I don't think it counts. But it's like, all of these are like older people and like, who's, who, yeah, who's, who's current, who's fresh that like right. can deliver that. Mm, oh, mm. I almost want to say, but it's not right. Uh, what's his fucking name? I want to say Craig T. Nelson, but that's not right. Uh, <laughs> coach? Uh, yeah, no, that's not who I was thinking of. But um, I just, just rewatched Poltergeist. Speaking oh, of, speaking of Craig T. Nelson, how was it? It's. I was transfixed because as a kid, that was the scariest movie I'd ever seen, and to this day, I still think of it as like one of the scariest things in the world. Mm -hmm. There's like not a lot that happens in that movie and it's all you know it's a lot of atmospheric stuff mm -hmm. and craig t nelson he's just like he's a very blasé but funny character actor in a way that i didn't pick up as a kid like there's there's a certain bounce to his movements you know what i mean yep and it continues in part two his his uh he gets even better in part two, I think. I should rewatch that one too. That one also freaked me out when I was young. God is in his holy temple. You know that scene in Poltergeist? I don't know how well you remember the movie where one of the Ghostbuster guys like peels his own face off uh -huh. in, in the mirror. 
Mm-hmm. That's just one of my favorite moments in all of movie dumb. Cause it's like your own reflection betrays you. That was the scene that destroyed me when I was yeah. a kid. I was way too young when I saw that. Uh, and I saw it in the theater. Yeah, me that too. That scene in particular like, just gutted me. I was so terrified of that. That movie was rated PG when it came out. <laughs> what? They didn't even have PG-13 yeah. at the time. Right. Yeah. Jaws, which starts <sighs> with a fully naked woman in the water <laughs> and is, like, one of the most terrifying movies supposedly ever made. <laughs> mm-hmm. PG. I think India Temple of Doom was the first PG thirteen yeah. movie. I remember it was that. either the it was either the first one or it was first the first reason why they had to create yeah. mm-hmm. the the new rating for future movies. For the what, what was it and what was it in that even movie? It was just the 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 chest the rip your heart out scene. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Is but like the... uh, compared to all the other shit that they let slide before yeah. that, like how is that like the barometer of disgusting? Like, come on, you guys. I mean, I think that you have like Reagan and the White House and like uh, Tipper Gore and mm-hmm, whomever, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, all the sort of like we've got to protect the children. And like maybe they're right. Maybe like uh, yeah. I'm being a dick when I say it with that tone of voice. I don't know. Like, no, nah, Tipper Gore can get fucked. But yeah, but but when you when you when you have publishing when you're publishing something and you're yeah. profiting off it and you set you know it to to do things that make it. Uh, as they did in the 80s to make it as like pretty degenerate as possible to get as many people watching. It's the same thing like when the internet yeah. came out. It's like the, for then in the 80s it was cable and and v, in the VCR like people were having unfettered access to these people's publishing. Everybody's, you know, and of course they used sex, drugs, and violence and almost everything cool <laughs> to make yeah. it more. And uh, yeah, you gotta kind of, you gotta like choke that shit a little bit. It was well, that's what you call production air. values. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys, I have my uh, my vote. Who is not there yet, but I think could be a good Leslie N- Nielsen Nelson Jesus Christ uh, stand-in. Daniel <laughs> Craig. Daniel Craig. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm a serious actor for most of his career, and now he's doing kind of goofy murder mysteries. I think he just needs to push it a little bit further and he could totally be the next one. Well, here's where I think, I mean, I think that he's very, very good, but I think that it's a different flavor because like, well, for sure. example, in Glass Onion and Knives Out, he's doing like a foghorn leghorn yeah. accent and he's, it's great. He's chewing the scenery and he's going to 11 every single time. Um, but that's, is- that's like the opposite, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the story. Right. That's the format too. You don't have that that airplane format, which Naked right. Gun is is like gone. Nobody does that. Anymore. They were doing those what the scary movies and the those series. Well, those, uh, but those no one's really making. You know that what was the series of uh, spoof movies, scary movie, and yeah, all, the, all those Williams they, they, brother they, movies. Yeah, 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 basically, and the and, but they didn't have the deadpan. Leslie Nielsen was in a few of them, wasn't he? Didn't it? But they didn't have much of the uh, deadpan yeah. leads. No, I'm oh. not saying he's there, but I think he could get there. Yeah. But also, I just found out yesterday, uh, one of the writers of the scary movies, or at least some of them, is the same guy who wrote uh, Chernobyl and The Last of Us. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Neat. I, actually, I've got, I've got a nominee for a Leslie Nielsen. Let's hear it. Rashida Jones. Uh, Did you watch Angie Tribeca, which is sort I of that same? Of it. It's got that same goofy mm-hmm. feel as like an airplane movie, but like the people in it take everything seriously. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I you know I just really want a very serious actor to replace him, or at least someone with a history of being a very serious actor. Someone who's been in d- disaster movies and cop shows. Oh, she's been in cop shows. Oh, you know, Brian Cox has an occasional very, comedic turn. Yeah, he's very funny. Right? Yeah. He's the very gruff, uh, he, he's like the, the father guy on Succession. He he's in a he's in like the Born movies. He was Hannibal Lecter. 
Yeah, that's right. Wait, um, okay, and Manhunter, right? Manhunter, yeah. Michael Manhunter. Michael Manhunter. <laughs> Um, he so he was in um, what's that movie? Uh, adaptation. He had that really funny role in Adaptation. What was his role in Adaptation? He was the screenwriter. Oh yes. He was leading the class, and God help you if you use voiceover. <laughs> so good. Um, he uh, fuck. He was in. Thing. He was in that Broken Lizard movie. I can't remember the name oh, of the title. The, uh, yeah, the uh, the Super Troopers. Super Troopers, yeah. Oh. He's he like was, the chief in yeah. Super Troopers. And he's hilarious. He was all, I mean, he also plays like uh, this pedophile molester guy in LIE <laughs> that came out like at the same time. Hilarious. And was amazing because he's like, it's like one of the, he should have won every award in the world for it. Yeah, I'm looking at him and I know that I know him. I just cannot place him in anything. He wasn't so great as Hannibal Lecter. He wasn't. No. The movie made very little. <laughs> no. That movie made very little of the character. I don't remember that well. That was like a made-for-TV one that no, came no, out. No, no, no. It look, I mean, it was kind of like because it was Michael Mann. It was like Miami Vice uh, <laughs> thing. But uh, it's what's his name from CSI? The first CSI guy plays uh, the lead FBI uh, guy. The red-haired it's, guy. That's in Rambo. That's in the first First Blood movie. No, 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 no. The, oh, Brian. What? No, no, no. The guy. Uh, what's his, no? It's the very first CSI guy. But uh, it's the very, I always forget his name. Not that you know all. The, I don't know all the CSIs. I just remember he was the very absolute first one. And he he was in uh, to live and die in L.A. To live and remember to live and die in L.A. But he's also in Manhunter, and then Brian Cox played. Uh, Hannibal Lecter, but it wasn't it, in the movie. It wasn't the big uh, thing that it was in Silence of the Lambs. His character it was mainly the serial killer that he was looking for. Hannibal Lecter was kind of like a super side character, but good movie, still a good movie. Manhunter. Did you guys see Tokyo Vice, produced by Michael Mann, and it's like a new-ish show that came out on HBO. He directed the first episode, and it's very good. And I don't think he directed any of the others. Anyway. Hmm. It's a different... That's another Michael Mann project. Did you see The Red Dragon? Oh, that's the the remake of Manhunter. That's, like, much better. Um, with ha with, with uh, so. Anthony Hopkins, you know, because uh, it takes place before Silence of the Lambs. I think I saw but it's, it. It's good. That's what Ray F with Ray Fiennes as the uh, cleft lip killer. Oh, hey, did you watch um, the menu with him and Anya Taylor Joy? Not yet. Okay. All right. Uh, it's on my. It's on my menu. Ooh. What about Ron Perlman? Is he funny? Can be. That's the thing. I don't want them to be funny until yeah. they are. He's too. He's goofy in everything he does. So I've never seen him play anything straight. That's true. He's kind of like a ham, a honey glazed ham. That guy. <laughs> what about Nicholas Holt? I think that's his name. The guy from The Great. Did I you guys watch The Great? A, yeah. I didn't. I didn't watch The Great, but I don't see that guy as a real dude. <laughs> he's like a child actor. He's just all he is is acting. He does have a baby yeah. face. Yeah. And I. He's just so steeped in acting. I don't, you know, you can tell like when a, someone is like a person, you can, and they're drawing from their actual, right, like knowledge of humanity. Right, right. <laughs> this is a kid drawing on what he sees as you're supposed to, and that, that I still love him. I love everything he does, but I don't see him as a, as like a straight guy. What was, he was, I mean, uh, what Mad Max, he was awesome. It was great. What about? And, uh, as Beast, awesome as Beast. Oh, what about uh, what's his name? That was in the the guy uh, that played Mad Max, Tom Hardy. I could almost see that. Right? Yeah. yeah. Did you guys see Venom? Yeah. Yeah. I have not laughed so hard in a movie theater. Wow. That and it was crazy because it was like 
everyone in the theater was on the same page of just like guffawing spitting popcorn like at the movie how ridiculous this movie yes and it's like oh my god if you're tuned into that yeah that's fun it's the best and it felt like he was tuned into that Mm -hmm. in the right way i get the sense that guy is a bit of a bro probably i kind of feel like he just wants to exude that but he isn't like this i'm doing this for my job but i'm really not that way i don't know i could be wrong i mean i feel like to make it in hollywood it's like a bro culture and so bros rise to the top because (laughs) they're made of oil yeah (laughs) bro code yeah Who are some who are some other bros that could become a, Le, uh, a Leslie Nielsen? Um, let's just go off the Avengers. What do, what do we got in the Avengers? We got Oh. What about um what's his name who took over Don Cheadle? Oh, uh, Don Cheadle's amazing. I don't know. There's pretty much nothing that guy can't do. That's what I'm saying. What about Here's an out of the box one. What about Kim Cattrall? Mm. You don't, you don't, guys. You guys don't see it. <laughs> Have you seen yeah. the video of her? On like, it's supposed to be like Entertainment Tonight or something, and she's like, "My husband's a great piano player. He's great at jazz." And she has him play on the piano, and then she scats for like twenty minutes. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that, but that sounds. Very funny. I sat in for 20 minutes this morning. <laughs> a total scat nice. fest. <laughs> With the best coffee. <laughs> Guys, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this episode. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll see you next time.